Good day, my dear undergraduate students. Welcome to a class on the salivary gland. So I hope you are able to appreciate the background, class 9. Salivary gland is important for us mainly for two things. There will be the tumors of the salivary gland. Tumors of the salivary gland, they may be asked together as a short note or pleomorphic adenoma, Warthin's tumor, etc. can be asked as questions. Mucoepidermoid is another one, then an adenoid cystic carcinoma. These major things you can remember and pleomorphic adenoma itself is a slide for us. It won't be kept as a specimen. So you are able to find the epithelial component, then you are able to see the mixoid background and there can be a pseudocartilaginous area that you are seeing. Sometimes that can be both. So that is why it is called pleomorphic adenoma. You will have to explain this more common in the parotid region. Whereas a Warthin's tumor will be more common in the submandibular node. This one you people will have to explain. The tumors of the salivary gland, briefly mentioned, can be a, there are different uh, things, but if you people can mention these four types, it is more than enough. There can be a benign monomorphic adenoma or a pleomorphic adenoma. And then there can be the malignant such as the mucoepidermoid tumor. These things, only the gross, where does it occur? What is the microscopic feature? Just two points for each. Another one that will be important in this class will be the Jogren syndrome. Jogren syndrome is literally lack of any secretion. There is a dry lacrimal gland, so there can be a keratitis, there can be the salivary gland also. That is becoming almost atrophic, there can be metaplasia and calculi which are getting formed. Jogren syndrome along with rheumatoid arthritis, you people can read up in autoimmune disease class of mind. So those will be the important things in the salivary class. Thank you.